United States, accompanied by the Secretary of Defense. I have a brief statement, and then uh, I'd be glad to take a couple of questions and then turn to Secretary Cheney, who will take some questions, and then he will go over to the Pentagon for a, an in-depth, more of an in-depth briefing. On August 6th, in response to the unprovoked Iraqi invasion of Kuwait, I ordered the deployment of U.S. military forces to Saudi Arabia and the Persian Gulf to deter further Iraqi aggression and to protect our interests in the region. Uh, what we've done is right, and I'm happy to say that most members of Congress and the majority of Americans agree. Before the invasion in August, we had succeeded in the struggle for freedom in Eastern Europe, and we'd hopefully begun a new era that offered uh, the promise uh, of peace. Following the invasion, I stated that if history had taught us any lesson, it was that we must resist aggression or it would destroy our freedom. Just ask the people of Kuwait and the foreign nationals in hiding there and the staffs of the remaining embassies who have experienced the horrors of Iraq's illegal occupation, its systematic dismantling of Kuwait and its abuse of Kuwaitis and other citizens. The world community also must prevent an individual clearly bent on regional domination from establishing a chokehold on the world's economic lifeline. We're seeing global economic stability and growth already at risk at, as each day countries around the world pay dearly for Saddam Hussein's aggression. From the very beginning, we and our coalition partners have shared common political goals. The immediate complete and unconditional withdrawal of Iraqi forces from Kuwait, restoration of Kuwait's legitimate government, protection of the lives of citizens held hostage by Iraq, both in Kuwait and Iraq, and restoration of security and stability in the Persian Gulf region. To achieve these goals, uh, we and our allies have forged a strong diplomatic, economic, and military strategy to force Iraq to comply with these objectives. The framework of this strategy is laid out in 10 United Nations resolutions overwhelmingly supported by the United Nations Security uh, Council. In three months, the U.S. troop contribution to the multinational force in Saudi Arabia has gone from 10,000 to 230,000 as part of Operation Desert Shield. General Schwarzkopf reports that our forces, in conjunction with other coalition forces, now have the capability to defend successfully against any further Iraqi aggression. After consultation with King Fahd and our other allies, I have de today directed the Secretary of Defense to increase the size of U.S. forces committed to Desert Shield to ensure that the coalition has an adequate offensive military option should that be necessary to achieve our common goals. Toward this end, we will continue to discuss the possibility of both additional Allied force contributions and appropriate United Nations actions. Iraq's brutality, aggression, and violations of international law cannot be allowed to succeed. Uh, Secretary Baker has been consulting with our key partners in the coalition. He's met with the emirs of uh, Bahrain and Kuwait, King Fahd, President Mubarak, as well as the Chinese Foreign Minister, uh, President Ozal, uh, Foreign Minister Shevardnadze, President Gorbachev. Uh, he also will be meeting with Prime Minister Thatcher and President Mitterrand. Uh, I've been heartened by Jim's appraisal of the strong international solidarity and determination to ensure that Iraq's aggression does not stand and is not rewarded. Uh, but right now, Kuwait is struggling for survival. And along with many other nations, we've been called upon to help. The consequences of our not doing so would be incalculable because Iraq's aggression is not just a challenge to the security of Kuwait and other Gulf nations, but to the better world that we all have hoped to build in the wake of the Cold War. And therefore, we and our allies cannot and will not shirk our responsibilities. 
the state of Kuwait must be restored or no nation will be safe and the promising future we anticipa anticipate uh, will indeed be jeopardized. Let me conclude with a word to the young American GIs deployed in the Gulf. We are proud of each and every one of you. I know you miss your loved ones and want to uh, know when you'll be coming home. Uh, we won't leave you there any longer than necessary. I want every single soldier out of there as soon as possible. And we are all grateful for your continued sacrifice uh, and your commitment. Now, with no further ado, I'd be glad to take a couple of questions and then refer to, uh, when I leave, uh, Dick, take some questions and then go over to the Pentagon. Uh, Helen. Mr. President, it sounds like you're going to war. You have moved from a defensive position to an offensive position, and you have not said how many more troops you are sending, or really why. Well, I've said why right now, and I hope it's been very clear to the American people. No, I'm just con con continuing to uh, do what we feel is necessary to complete our ob objectives, to fulfill our objectives that have been clearly stated. Well, are you going to war? I'm not. We, I would love to see a peaceful resolution to this question, what and that's what I want. From, from the offense, defense to offense. I would like to see a f peaceful solution to this question. Uh, I think Saddam Hussein should fully, without condition, comply to the UN resolutions. And if this uh, movement of force is what convinces him, so much the better. Mr. Yes, President, you said, that, that you said last week that the sanctions haven't had the impact that you wanted. Uh, some, uh, some members of the coalition are urging a go-slow approach. Uh, the President of Egypt says you've got to wait two or three months before you uh, judge whether the sanctions have worked. Are you willing to wait that long? Wait for what? To see if the sanctions have worked. Well, we are in, well, I think from talking to Jim Baker and recently to President Mubarak that we are in total sync with him, uh, but uh, I hope that the sanctions will work uh, within a two-month period. But uh, I don't think we got a difference with Egypt on this at all, Terry. The question is, how long are you willing to Well, I can't tell you how long. I'm not going to, if I, if I knew, I certainly wouldn't want to signal that to, uh, to uh, Saddam Hussein. Yeah, John. Uh, Prime Minister Thatcher said yesterday that if indeed Saddam doesn't withdraw from Kuwait, that uh, you and the Allies will use force. I haven't heard you say that before. You talked about wanting to retain the option of force. But would you use force? Well, I'm, I don't want to go to say what I will or will not do, but uh, certainly I noted what Prime Minister Thatcher, Minister Thatcher said, one of the strongest members of this uh, coalition. And uh, she's an eloquent spokesman for her views and, and speaks uh, in, in, in a way that shows uh, that we're all together. So I have not ruled out uh, uh, the use of force at all, and I think that's evident by what we're doing here today. Can I just follow that up by, by going back to the speech you gave at the Pentagon uh, back in August when you talked about uh, oil, protecting the Middle East oil reserves. You talked about American jobs, in fact, the American way of life uh, being endangered. Yet when you went out on the campaign trail, you seemed to shy away from oil. You, you said demonstrators don't seem to understand that we're not going to go to war for oil. But that was one of the things you talked about. And in fact, isn't oil part of the American national interest? Isn't that a main reason we're there? It is a part of it, but it is not the main reason, or I'd say a main reason. A main reason we're there is to, to set back aggression, to say that aggression is unrewarded. My argument with some of the protests is that they seem to focus that suggests that uh, that uh, uh, that oil is the sole reason that we are involved in this enormous commitment, and that is simply not correct. There's a lot of other uh, other interests in uh, uh, the restoration of the security and stability in the Persian Gulf region clearly relates to the world's economic interest. I'm not denying that, and I'm not backing away from the fact that all uh, the Western world has, you know, real interest in that. But that, my argument with those uh, people is that, it, that they are missing the point. The point is, it is the aggression against Kuwait that has caused this coalition to come together as it has. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel that you are free to take offensive action without any kind of UN resolution authorizing it? To yes, we have the authority, but uh, we've, we've been great believers in going to the United Nations and uh, uh, I, I think one of, the, one of the major successes has been the ability to have world opinion totally on our side because of UN action. The peacekeeping function of the United Nations has indeed been rejuvenated uh, by the actions of the Security Council. 
the way in the back, because I've been accused by a distinguished senior reporter of not getting into the back of the room, so I'd like to rectify that. Mr. President, yes, sir. <laughs> no, yeah. do you yet have the support you need in order to secure a, an additional resolution from the UN Security Council to explicitly authorize the use of force? Do you now have sufficient support on the Security Council? Uh, I, I, I would say that the Baker mission is what it is about is consultation. Uh, that subject will be discussed in some ways, I'm sure, but that's not why he's there. We're talking about a wide array of, of issues, and so I'd, I'd say uh, we have not tried to specifically poll the 15 members of the, or the other 14 members of the Security Council uh, along those lines, so I can't answer whether, whether we would or not. If I may follow, has any country told you they would block such a resolution? Uh, not, none, some may have said such a thing, but I've not, I've not, it's not been brought to my attention at all. And I'm, again, I, I, I think I'd know if that were the case, but I don't think so yet. Mr. Mr. President, it would seem that the situation at the U.S. Embassy in Kuwait is uh, crucial to the future of the, the overall situation in the Gulf. What is the latest there? What is the situation with their food and water supplies? And do you plan, have anything in the works now to resupply them? Well, I think it's unconscionable to try to starve people out and to isolate them from food and, and uh, supplies of all kinds, and that's exactly what's going on. Uh, in terms of how long uh, they can survive, uh, I'm not sure I could give you a specific answer, but I believe the answer would be a few weeks, something of that nature. Plans to resupply them when they run out? Well, of them, or uh, they... if there were, given the hostile environment in which these people are living, uh, it would be unproductive to discuss it. Yeah. Mr. President, what has happened in the last two weeks that has led you to put now an <laughs> offensive force into Saudi Arabia? Well, we have, uh, we have not only offensive but defensive forces there already. And uh, what leads me to, to uh, do this is just because I believe, upon the advice of our able Secretary of Defense and others, uh, that this is in the best security interests of our people that are there and of the coalition. I think it is the best, I think it is just a guarantee uh, of, uh, of uh, the safety of all, and I think it sends a very strong signal, uh, another strong signal to Saddam Hussein that we are very, very serious about the success uh, of the United, to seeing the United Nations resolutions comply to in their entirety without, without uh, uh, any kind of watering down. Sir, would you say that we're in a critical phase now between uh, a peaceful solution and, and possible armed conflict? Uh, I wouldn't phrase it that way. Mr. President, the, the longer that you wait, the longer that no action is taken in Kuwait, the less and less there seems to be of Kuwait. What's the point of waiting if it's not going to be anything left of that country when you finally decide to go in? Well, I've told you that I, want to, I would like to feel that uh, Saddam Hussein would come to his senses and comply. Uh, under economic pressure with the, econo with the uh, sanctions uh, that have been taken in the United Nations and with the, uh, the objectives. I, th I would like to think the sanctions, economic sanctions, would, would compel him to do that, which he uh, has been unwilling to do. Regrettably, uh, he keeps reiterating his view that this, is prov that this is not Kuwait but Province 19, and that is unacceptable. Uh, to the United States and to our partners. So it's, it's uh, uh, I think we're, we're giving these sanctions uh, time to work. We're giving world opinion time to mobilize and, and um, impress on him that, uh, that we're all serious. And, uh, that, and But now we're, uh, we're moving up our forces for the reasons I've given you. It might not be uh, much pressure. Well, that's, that worries me. It worries me very much, as do the lives of those who have been forced into hiding by his brutality and his violation of international law. Of course, it, it concerns me deeply. And uh, I've spoken about that, the dismantling of, of Kuwait and the systematic brutality that is exercised against the citizens of Kuwait. And as each day goes by, uh, it's worse. So I, I, I take your point that it's... That it's uh, uh, I guess it's your point that it's a that it's a very bad situation, but uh, we I just keep reiterating my determination uh, to see our objectives fulfilled here. You're welcome.
Sir, on your consultation that your Secretary of State's doing now in Moscow, <clears throat> could you just spell out for us what your understanding is as of today with Mikhail Gorbachev on the use of force? Well, I talked to Jim Baker. It's a very timely question because I talked to him just before coming in here uh, from Moscow. Uh, and he had a long series of, of long, well, series of consultations and discussions there with the foreign minister and with Mr. Gorbachev. Uh, I am convinced from what the secretary has told me that we are on the same wavelength in terms of uh, the, uh, the objectives that I've spelled out here. But I can't go in with you into what the Soviet position will be on, uh, on uh, on uh, use of force, or you know, I don't think they've been asked to send forces. Is that I'm, maybe I missed the question? Uh, Mr. Shepard Nadze, on the record today, said that uh, they too would not rule out the use of force while they still wanted a peaceful solution. Mm -hmm. Does that at least help you send the kind of signals to Saddam Hussein that you're also trying to send? Here? I think it's. I think it is. I think it is very helpful. But I think uh, the s the signal of solidarity between the United States and the Soviet Union and the rest of the Security Council has already gone out. But no, I do, I'm, I'm, I, I think that it is very helpful uh, to have a position like that stated and restated because that's the way the whole world feels and it is good to have uh, this, this um, uh, solid front uh, between ourselves and the Soviet Union. And I think Jim felt that he had a constructive visit with the Chinese uh, foreign minister, and he's looking forward to his meetings with uh, President Mitterrand and uh, Prime Minister Thatcher in the next couple of days. But his trip has been extraordinarily helpful in sending that signal of solidarity and determination on the part of uh, those that are involved here. Strong determination. Yeah, Frank. 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 Um, I understand. I'm going to take a couple of more and then let uh, let uh, Dick take some questions. I understand that we're going to be getting that briefing and General Powell will speak later, but can you please give us some sense of the numbers and the types of uh, reinforcements that you're sending to the Gulf? And do you believe that this will be the final deployment? We keep seeing the numbers ratcheting up and hearing that, uh, that there should be sufficient to do the job. Let me simply say uh, we're talking about substantial numbers. I will defer to uh, uh, with your permission, of course, to uh, the Secretary of Defense and the, and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, who will um, be able to help more than I will on the details of this move. But uh, I can't say whether, after this is completed, whether there will be anything else done or not. I mean, we, we, uh, I'm still hopeful that Saddam Hussein will get the message that he is not going to prevail and that he has to get out of Kuwait without condition and that the rulers have to come back and that the stability of the Gulf must be guaranteed. So I would simply leave it there and let the, if you would, let the uh, defense experts take the, uh, take the rest of it. Yeah. You have consulted, if I might follow up, on this deployment and, in fact, on the military situation overall with the other countries involved in the multinational forces. There have been uh, complaints, observations out of Israel that were there to be offensive action, there needs to be coordination or some sort of chain of command involving the Israelis too, or they may end up being involved. To what extent are you communicating with the Israelis, and to what extent do you envision any role or possible role for the Israelis should this come to war? Well, I think the whole world knows that the United States is, uh, has a very special relationship uh, with Israel, a strong relationship. Uh, I think we are uh, in close touch with uh, the key players there uh, in terms of our objectives, and I think they've conducted themselves in a, uh, uh, regarding all of this uh, very well indeed. But I'm not going to discuss any more details than that, uh, but I, 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 I feel that we're on a uh, um, good wavelength there. We have some differences, obviously. Got to, really, I got just one and one, and then I got to go. Yeah. To follow up. I got to recognize him on the outside. Go ahead, and then, yeah, you and Alan. Then. <laughs> to follow up on Wyatt's question, after Foreign Minister Shevardnadze made his comments today, President Gorbachev seemed to say that it was too early to talk about the use of force. Are the Soviets sending us mixed signals, or no. is this just an indication that? like uh, President Mubarak made earlier in the week, that some of our allies want more time to try to find a diplomatic solution before you use the I don't, I don't get the feeling we're getting any mixed signals at all from the Soviets, particularly after I've talked to uh, 
to uh, Jim Baker. I know there was some feeling there were mixed signals because of Mr. Primakoff's mission, but as that has, uh, upon the completion of that, I think people recognize that we are still uh, very much in accord, uh, in agreement with the Soviet on uh, on matters as it relates to the Gulf. So it's it's good, Anne, and it's strong, and I just can't uh, worry about that point at all after talking to Jim Baker. Have an explanation for the difference between Mr. Shevardnadze's remarks and Mr. Gorbachev's remarks today? No, he made the point that uh, we were together with them, and that was not discussed. Any differences on the uh, on the aisle? No, last one on the aisle. The lovely gentleman at the glass. Mr. President, Mr. President, some members of your administration have very important questions to ask you. Only if he'll yield. And you know, in the Congress, they say I yield to the distinguished lady from Texas. But if he don't want to yield, I'm sorry. I've recognize the gentleman. Uh, Mr. President, uh, some members of your administration... Sir, I've disappointed you so much. Please go ahead. Some members of your administration are convinced that Saddam Hussein will not move until he is, until the 11th hour or 11.59, when he is totally convinced that you are about to use military force. Why is he not convinced now, do you think? Why, how do you expect <clears throat> that you will be able to get to that 11.59 minute. Well, I'm not sure I accept the 11.59 analogy, but uh, if there has ever been any doubt in his mind about the seriousness of the West and of the other Arab countries and of the coalition, put it that way, uh, I think that uh, those doubts are rapidly being dispelled. You see, I do believe that when he moved into Kuwait, I'd, I think he felt he was going to have just a, an easy time of it and that the world would not rise up in arms against the aggression. I think he miscalculated there. I believe he thought he could just take over Kuwait and then there'd be a lot of talk and discussion and he would be able to uh, turn Kuwait a sovereign nation, a member of the uh, Arab League, a member of the United Nations into Province 19. And the United States, along with other countries, uh, said, no, we're not going to permit this aggression to stand because an unchecked aggression today could lead to some horrible uh, world conflagration tomorrow. And so I think there's where the miscalculation originally was. Uh, I find it hard to believe that today, November 8th, uh, he does not understand that he's up against a determined, uh, unprecedented alliance. And so I hope that uh, he is rethinking his position of unyielding, uh, uh, of, of, of unyielding opposition to the will of the rest of the world. And I, I would think that uh, when he surveys the force that's there, uh, this is a force that's going, what other countries are doing in this regard, uh, he will recognize that he is up against a, uh, a just an un a foe that he can't possibly uh, manage militarily. And Margaret Thatcher touched on that yesterday, and I thought she did it very well indeed. And so, uh, if nothing else happens, uh, I'm con I'm convinced that this move uh, will show him how serious uh, we are as a significant partner uh, in this coalition. And I think it's a good thing. That has, will have strong support uh, from others around the world, and let's hope he comes to his senses and does tomorrow that which he should have done uh, weeks ago, because this aggression simply will not stand. Now, Dick, it's all yours. As the President indicated, we uh, got a briefing scheduled in the Pentagon for General Powell and myself in a few minutes to fill out the details of uh, the decision uh, the President's made today, but I'd be happy to respond to a couple of questions. We have, uh, let me address the question of numbers. We have consistently, since the very beginning of this operation, in August, three months ago, indicated that we were not going to put uh, a number on the deployment. As we have achieved a certain level of deployment, we've reported that we've had 150,000 or 200,000. Today, we're 230,000 plus. Uh, we will not put an upper limit on this deployment. We've started the flow uh, back in August, and what the President has directed me to do today is to assign additional units to go to the Gulf, and uh, it is a considerable additional increment of U.S. force. 
involves uh, additional heavy divisions as well as uh, naval and air forces. And we'll, we'll announce coming from both Europe and the United States, and we will announce those details in a few minutes. Mike. Um, I want to talk about, Mr. Secretary, in, in Europe we waited 40 years for um, economic pressures to lead the Soviet Union to withdraw its forces from Eastern Europe despite a number of aggressions. Um, why shouldn't we wait a year or so for economic sanctions to take hold um, uh, in Iraq and lead the Iraqis to leave Kuwait? And if we're prepared to wait, why should we send such a large force at this time since it's harder to sustain a large force in the desert than a somewhat smaller force? Well, the directions I've been given by the President uh, are I think very clear cut. <clears throat> that is to say that we're to continue the policy that's currently in force, that the military units that are in the uh, Gulf region are there to deter further aggression, to defend should deterrence fail, to enforce the sanctions. We are also now obviously deploying, as the President mentioned in his statement, sufficient additional force to make certain that should uh, circumstances warrant that we will have the capacity okay to uh, undertake offensive military action as well. The decision about how long we wait uh, and how much time we're willing to give sanctions to work is uh, something that will be made above my pay grade. Mr. Secretary, there are reports that Saddam Hussein fired his military chief of staff today. Uh, what is going on? Is there dissension in the ranks? And does that have something to do with the timing of uh, these news conferences to try to keep international pressure. I have seen uh, the reports that he's uh, changed out his chief of staff. I don't have any special knowledge as to why that occurred and our announcements are totally unrelated to those developments. In the back. Mr. Secretary, could you give us a range? When does this deployment begin? When do you expect it to end? I signed uh, the deployment orders this morning. Some of the forces had previously been alerted to be ready uh, to deploy. So in effect, the, uh, the deployment actually begins today. Uh, it will obviously, given the size of the deployment, uh, be something that will run over a significant additional period of time. Uh, I wouldn't want to be more precise than that. We've always refrained from uh, indicating when a particular unit uh, would be deployed in combat ready. Clear in the back. Uh, does this deployment involve a further call-up of reserves? And has there been consultation with congressional leaders today on this deployment? The answer it will, is it will involve an additional call up reserves, and there have been uh, notifications to members of Congress. I've personally talked with uh, the leadership and the chairman and ranking members of uh, all of the key armed services and appropriations uh, committees. As you uh, increase your deployments, will you be able to maintain the promise that I think was made by uh, the Joint Chairman of the Joint Chiefs that you would rotate people in and out every six months? We've, we've never made such a promise. We've said that we were looking at a rotation policy, uh, but the forces that we are ordering into the area today are not going in there to replace those that have already been deployed. They are an addition to those that are already in the area. Mr. Right. Mr. Secretary, is it is it safe to say that the message that is being sent from this room today is that the United States is now prepared to fight a ground war to force Iraq out of Kuwait if necessary. The message is as exactly as we've stated it and as the President stated it, and that is that our policy is to see to it that Saddam Hussein complies with the resolutions voted by the UN Security Council. Those are our goals and objectives that we are hopeful that we can achieve that peacefully. We're hopeful we can achieve that uh, through the application of the economic sanctions now in force. But we also have the military option uh, available to us should uh, the other course of action be unsuccessful. One more question and then I've got to run. Mr. Secretary, you've been yes. reluctant. You've been reluctant. Mr. Secretary. Mr. Secretary. The young man with the hair in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree that the, that the winter months are the optimal time to fight a war in the desert? And is weather compelling a decision to use force before the sanctions have had? I wouldn't want to speculate about uh, future deadlines of when sanctions will be deemed to have failed or or uh, what uh, uh, pressures, uh, weather, and climate considerations might bring to bear. Um, we are prepared to uh, 
carry out the President's instructions, and those instructions are as I've already related. One more question of the gentleman I insulted in back, and then I've got to go. Yes, sir. Mr. Secretary, uh, you've been reluctant here to uh, use a number. Uh, the number 100,000 additional troops has been widely used and widely reported. Uh, is that ballpark accurate? Uh, I have never used the number 100,000. We've never announced a number until we actually have those additional forces in theater. We'll continue to pursue that policy. I would expect to be all kinds of numbers rumored, leaked, speculated about, but the fact is none of them has any official standing. Uh, we have opened up the